Hello. Hi, Ding. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, it's just about uh, 4 o'clock on May 6th. We're headed, again, headed out again. I had to check my kickstand. Sometimes I kick it back and it doesn't go all the way back, uh, so I had to make sure it went all the way back. And uh, yeah, so we're off. We have a lot more coming up in terms of uh, uh, development on the Cyborg Alpha TV network. No boat. Clear on the left, and after this white van here, it'll be clear on the right. And we're off. The day is definitely warmer. However, we've got another vortex coming in, and they're predicting snow. <laughs> so, uh, the vortex wasn't predicted, uh, and they don't know the vortex is coming in, because they don't see it. It's only done in thermal imaging. The, my thermal imaging uh, 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 system that I have that do for, for observation for atmospheric physics, which will be another vlog coming in. Uh, be the or TV atmospheric basically an atmospheric physics uh, uh, observation show uh, showing uh, the life of observation. It's not too terribly exciting, so there will be uh, a number of things. It's mostly uh, for uh, sound and to see what's going on in terms of how uh, observation is actually done. But uh, there's a lot that's not known, and this is the whole reason for exploration, is to do the things that aren't known.
conservation takes a long time because things don't go by quickly and in many cases there's no way to speed it up and so you do have to spend the time doing the work in order to get anywhere in other, in other words it's the accumulation of information within the library that really makes the difference uh, if you don't have that accumulation then the library never grows and your understanding never grows and that's where the key sort of lies is that you have to have that understanding in order to, to move ahead at a rate that you should be moving ahead at but sometimes the expectation is beyond is not exactly what reality is there is a reality to how much comes in at, at a particular point in time like you cannot do years worth of observation within a few weeks or within a few months it takes a couple it takes the years in other words there's no take there's no shortcuts to uh, understanding or doing the observation that are, that is needed to be done. You simply have to get out and do the observation. And that's where the difficulty comes in because an observation could take you anywhere between four and six hours. Uh, and of course, uh, the time of day that I'm interested in is more at night it's around midnight to six o'clock in the morning that leaves you knocked out for the for, for the remaining day it's like, kind of like an old all-nighter so the question is how do you add this into a vlog that's uh uh, uh <laughs> you know already crammed with the uh, ride vlogs which take up about a half hour you'll need even longer for something like that <laughs> is that they occasionally what might end up happening is that the ride vlogs may be um, their own separate thing and just a portion of the ride vlog will end up uh, within the uh, our life as cyborg alpha so uh, it really depends on how uh, things end up working out in terms of the uh, overall editing the scheduling of different things different uh, tasks this will sort of determine how things end up working out. I do have to get used to still. The speed is still a little unnerving. <clears throat> but this will, this will come as the, as the rides get more and more difficult, more and more usual. Uh, this is something that will occur. Lion Lover Braun is back at his peak again. He's out uh, doing his. Uh, he, does, he typically does things on a daily basis, but in terms of his uh, vlog, but or his broadcast, it's not, he does a live. But uh, he seems like he's picking up again. The hard part is always having a positive face 
it, and it, because there's, there is a lot of negative that goes on in the world and it's hard to stay positive all the time. For a while there he was quite pessimistic, uh, but now he seems things are picking up. The, again, it has, this has to do again going into Chularp, which is going to have its own little, uh, its own little vlog, its own, its own show, Chularp will become its own thing. There is a lot of patience required in a lot of these things we'll called nerd gaming type of thing, including LARP. LARP, well, yeah, okay, it's fun. For the average person, it's not fun because it's a lot of work. It's a, it's a lot of studying. But for nerds who enjoy studying, uh, a LARP is, 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 LARP is how you game. For nerds, LARP is nerd gaming. And... This, this, what happens is that, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, Lord's Mobile, it, if you want to get into LARP, become some pretty serious LARP, uh, where you're not, you're not using dice, you're using... You end up using reality as your, uh, as your factor, you take it into reality. Well then, what you want to do is you want to play Lord's Mobile. Lord's Mobile will give you an understanding on what's required in terms of the patience to succeed at this, this, sort of these gaming uh, type of situations where you actually have a sort of a, call a real world simulator. But what LARP does is takes the, ga the gaming that is typically done within a server, or several servers, it's called these uh, uh, multi-room dungeons and brings it into a real world situation that's what they call uh, LARP is live action role play Well, the thing is, you bring in the you bring you basically bring the game the gaming mentality into reality, and with uh, QLAR, because it deals with uh, uh, spies and intelligence, uh, it's something that uh, needs and requires a lot of study because uh, you're looking for information that's typically hidden. And of course, if you're dealing with hidden information, there are going to be people who don't want it out. So, find that hidden information and figure out how to get it out to the general public without getting into any trouble like uh, Edward Snowden did. The last that's the game of QR is that, that sort of thing is the Edward Snowden type of thing where you're getting information that's hidden or forbidden and getting out to the public without getting caught. And it's, it's a lot of times, a lot of times it's, it depends on how you get the information out that determines whether you're in trouble or not. <laughs> uh, and there's a lot of information out there in the public sphere. Uh, so that you can get stuff that's sort of not known, but uh, at the same time, significant. Well, we are off. It is the 6th. It is close to 10.30, 11 o'clock in the evening. Getting up much later than I anticipated. 
Uh, I wasn't feeling too well. Looks like I gotta clean the visor. So the visor is getting a little dirty. It's causing a bit of a glare. So it means it's time to be cleaned. Normally, if I went the old way and Van Horn, there'd be a problem with the lights. Waiting for the lights to change, they wouldn't necessarily change. I'd have to wait for another car to come. But going through uh, Victoria Park, going uh, Pleasant View to Victoria Park, that's not going to be an issue. I do have to sort of figure out what's wrong with these lights. Headlight, so not a drop of rain. We think that every time that the time that we're living in, everyone thinks about this is true throughout. That we are distinct in our time, and that things that are being done are cutting edge and uh, of the utmost difficulties, and so on and so forth. Yet the reality is that there's always been troubles. There's always been, in many cases, extreme trials. The world that we've come to know, particularly in the modern century, is one that's rather recent. It, it, it is only, it, it is actually the result of uh, uh, the atomic bomb and the fear that it created as a weapon of annihilation that no one wanted to be annihilated. So uh, it changed the nature of warfare and changed the nature of uh, uh, geopolitics. And this is the environment we're living now. We're living in an environment of geopolitics. So how do you go from an environment of warfare to an, uh, an environment of peace? Well, not, this essentially means, uh, again, once again, geo, geopolitics. And this presents a challenge. How to change the world for the better, and this is the nature of Kular, is to sit down and look at history and then figure out a path forward. Because you only know where to go, what direction you can go in, by knowing where you've been. In other words, you don't want to repeat the mistakes of history. But if you don't know history, or if you're disconnected from history, then you're going to have a hard time because uh, uh, you're not going to know the things you need to know in order to prevent them from happening again. Assuming you can make it not happen again. Sometimes an incident, existences occur whether we like it or not. It is not really a choice in terms of uh, getting everything exactly the way we want it. It's sort of... You take... Uh, well, it's the same thing with well, the, the, the approach of calculus. It's the approximation that makes the thing. You're not going to get exactly what you want. Can you get approximately what you want? Is there a, a, a point at which you're satisfied? Go ahead. So now I'll be trailing the bus for a bit. The slowdown was a bit more than I anticipated, but I was still able to manage it. 
Well, I don't know my speed tonight in terms of the my capacity because I'm feeling fatigued. And I said before, once you start feeling fatigued, the focus and control diminishes. And so that's what's going on now. My focus and control is diminished. And so I need to be more cautious than I would norm would ordinarily be. And that's what happens when driving at night. Uh, the fatigue is there. And so naturally the caution of driving at night, the caution of driving during while well, you're fatigued is naturally there. It's, it's a given. But well, hey, we're watching watching an old TV show. My parents like old TV shows. And there's one from the BBC again. The BBC really seemed to sort of, uh, in its heyday, hit the nail on the head in terms of how to phrase serious subjects within comedies. And that's what they've done, is that in this case here, they have a comedy set in uh, occupied France. And they don't hit you over the head with, with, you know, with sort of the, the life lessons. But rather, they take a, a much more subtle approach. And if you know enough about history, you know what's going on. The problem is, if you don't know enough about history, you're not going to catch the subtleties of what's going on within the within the uh, within the, well, the teleplay or the or the script. It's, it, 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 ironically enough, the show called Allo Allo is, in many ways, set in occupation France. It, it's how to live within a shadow government. <laughs> or more appropriately, how to live under occupation or a repressive regime. And that's kind of some of where we are, to, where we're at today. And this is sort of at least some of the discussions. But again, is that we're at the early stages of this. We're not at the stages yet that the regime has become overly oppressive. Is you don't want it to get to that point. And right now, we sort of, just, sort of seem to be moving in this direction of nothing more than self-destruction. And this is what happened with Lionel Lebron. Lionel Lebron is hooked up with another group. This is Lionel Nation.